name is Tammy Padilla, and I'm the host of Let's Talk About Him. And who are we talking about? Y'all go ahead and put in the chat. We're talking about the Lord. That's who we are talking about. And my purpose and my goal is to be here on Thursday nights to talk about him live, to share scripture, to talk about how good he is, how amazing he is when we can just put our trust in him and believe that he is all that he says he is. night at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time and I'm inviting you to join me. I have guests each night that talks about the Lord giving their wonderful powerful testimony of how he has brought them through trials and tribulations but yet they're still standing. So I encourage you to join me Thursday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. talking about worship tonight. So ladies, I want to say welcome again and thank you all for joining us tonight and I'm excited to have this discussion with both of you. Our lives, how we live our lives is worship. Worship is a lifestyle to me because I worship God and it's important for us to remember that everything we do, it is worship. Mm -hmm. host Tammy Padilla and it's going to be another fantabulous night of discussion. So get your Bibles out because we're talking about the Lord tonight. Hello, hello everybody. How are you all doing tonight? You know, I'm excited every time I get here. For those that are joining me for the very first time, my name is Tammy Padilla, and I'm the host of this fabulous segment called Let's Talk About Him, and we're talking about the Lord. That's right. I'm talking about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I'm excited to talk about him every week. So I'm glad you joined us tonight. If this is your first time, go ahead and put that in the chat. Put in the chat where you from, where you chiming in from, because I'm looking for some particular people tonight, because I might have some of your people in the, in, the, in the seat tonight. 
So go ahead and put that in the chat. And while we're talking about that and you're putting things in the chat, go ahead and hit the like button. If you're on YouTube, hit the like bu button and, and let the people know that you like what you're watching tonight. You like talking about the Lord. You know, he said if we would lift him up, he would do the drawing of all men. And our goal is to just lift up the name of Jesus. And he said, you know, we're not supposed to be ashamed of him, y'all. Don't be ashamed to talk about the Lord. And I'm not ashamed, as you all know. I've been doing this for about three years. Can y'all believe it's been three years? Uh, let me go over here and say hello to my family over here because the Blessed Touch family is in the house. And y'all been with me for the three years. I mean, really, y'all have been hanging in here, and I love it. Hi, Natalia. Thanks for watching, girl. And Tempe, how you doing? Tempe, you see you're in the intro, right? You see you in the intro? I love you. Hello, hello. How are you, Tawana Dickinson? Thanks for joining us. Gwen, thank you, Miss Eleanor. Thank you, thank you. My mom is in the house. She said, Mommy is watching. Teresa Harris, thank you for joining us. We are going to have an awesome time. Pam, thanks for joining us tonight. You know, I just love the Blessed Touch family. Hi, Miss Sally. Yes, we got the family up in here tonight. And I see we have Alderman Sean Runch. Thank you so much for joining us. This is awesome. So listen, he said he's the first time. So I'm glad you joined us. And I just need you to... Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. You're on uh, Facebook. So, you know, just make sure you befriend me and come on back another time. That would be great. Okay. So, uh, Crystal, thank you so much for joining us. Now, this is your first time. Again, I'm here every Thursday night. And I'm grateful that God has allowed me to have this platform just to talk about him and to hear from others sharing their testimony. And my goal is to share their testimony with you. And you're like, Tammy, why would you want to share their testimony? Well, first of all, the word says that we're overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Then second of all, I want you to know that there's somebody that looks just like you that has been through something like you or more than what you've been through, but they're still standing. They're here to tell their testimony and tell you how good God is. I mean, can you get excited about that? I know. Uh, Minister Taida Stacey, thank you for joining us tonight. Pam Brinkley, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Joy. This is your first time Joy is joining us. Thank you. Um, she said, you're supporting my special guest. So thank you so much for joining us. So. We're going to go ahead and get started. And I always start with a scripture and a prayer. That's how we get things started because we want God to be honored in this thing. So our scripture tonight, yes. What is our scripture? Our scripture tonight is coming from John chapter 20, verse 29. And it says, Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. I'm going to say that again and I'm going to do the B clause. He says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now, that's good news, y'all. That's good news for us because Thomas, as you uh, may be familiar with the story, but if you're not, Thomas was one of the, the 12 disciples. And Thomas was the one that wasn't sure about Jesus' resurrection. And why was that? Because he hadn't really seen it before. The only time it was done before is because Jesus resurrected Lazarus, but no one else had done that. And now Jesus was gone. He had been crucified on the cross, laid in the borrowed tomb, and now his body wasn't there. And he, he's like, where is my Lord? And the disciples were trying to tell him, listen, he's risen. We saw him last Sunday. You need to, you need to believe he's there. And Thomas said, unless I touch his hand where the nail prints 
and I touch his those nail prints, and he said, and I put my hand in his thigh. Thomas didn't just want to look and see Jesus. He wanted to touch Jesus, right? And so when Jesus showed up in the midst of another meeting that they were having, Thomas was there, and Jesus said, Thomas, come here, look. Go ahead, touch it. See my hand? See my side? Go ahead and touch it. And Thomas, it, the word doesn't even say that, say that he actually touched it and put his hand in the side. It says he said, my Lord, my God. Like he had seen the deity. He believed. He was like, yes. And then Jesus goes on to say right here. He said, Thomas, because you have seen, you have believed. He said, but blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. That's me and you, y'all. We haven't seen him, but we believe. And he said, blessed are us. We are blessed. Blessed are us. Uh -huh, listen at that. But yes, he said, we're blessed. And guess what? We are, and some, some versions say that uh, blessed are those who have not seen yet they believe. We're more blessed than Thomas was, right? That's what some of the versions say. So what I want you to do is be encouraged. Jesus wants you to believe in who he is and how he can work in your life before you even see him. And if you haven't seen him and you believe, it says we're more blessed. Can y'all get excited about that? I'm more blessed because I'm believing without seeing we got to walk by faith and not by sight. That's what the scripture says. And this is, this is pretty much it. We got to walk in faith, believing that he did all the things he said he did. He left the Bible here for us to believe. Everything we need to know and believe is in the word of God. He just needs us to believe. Yes, believe. Yes. So let's go ahead and pray tonight. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you tonight to give you glory, honor, and praise, to magnify your name, to say, God, you are good. God, you are amazing. God, you are all of that and more. God, you are King of kings and Lord of lords. And we lift up your name. We lift up the name of Jesus, God. We recognize that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess, God. We recognize, God, because of you, God, we have authority to speak healing. We have the authority to speak deliverance. We have authority, God, that you've given to us, God. Your word says we have the mind of Christ. So, God, we thank you right now, God. We glorify your name for tonight, God. We ask that you will be in the midst of this conversation, God. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would just go throughout the airway, touching hearts and, and bringing people in to understand, God, you are the Lord. You are their source. You're everything they need, God. There's nothing that you cannot supply for them. So we thank you in advance. We ask you to bless our guest tonight. And she comes forth. And we want to give you all the glory, all the honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all are just getting excited on that prayer. Yeah, y'all are like, come on, come back, Sandy. Come back. I'm back. I'm back. Yeah, I'm back. So tonight. I want you all to know that I have this beautiful, beautiful woman here tonight. Woman of God. She has been through some things. She has done some things. And I don't even know where to begin. When I tell you all that she's done, I'm not going to tell you everything because I got to leave it for her to talk about. But she's written three books. I believe it's four. But, you know, she might be in the process of writing four or five, okay? But she's a writer. On top of that, she is the very first African-American Black woman, I'm going to say that, chair of the Rowan uh, Salisbury County, right? Board of Education. I, I believe she said the Board of Education, and she will correct me when she comes on if that is incorrect. But she is responsible for 18,000 children. Yeah, this is the woman you want to know that she is taking care of your children. She's making decisions that will impact your children's life for the best, right? And did I tell you that she was a woman of God on top of that? She's in the process of working on getting her doctorate. Yeah, don't get tired. Don't get tired because she's doing it all. 
So I want you all put in the chat. Come on, Black Touch family. I need y'all to come on and get in there and put in the chat. Welcome. Welcome to Alicia Bird Clark. Come on, y'all. Put it in the chat. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes. Woo! Hello, hello, ma'am. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Tammy? Miss Tammy. <laughs> I am so great and excited to talk with you and share your story with the Blessed Touch family. Thank you. You are welcome. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. I, <laughs> yes, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Well, well, first of all, I want to start out by asking you the very question, the very the, the question that I love to ask you because I think where people come from, how they start out, is very important to hear where they end up at. So right. tell me about little Alicia growing up and what you were like. What did you want to be? So growing up, um, my childhood was a happy childhood. Um, my mom was number seven out of 14 children. And I believe that I'm probably number 11 out of 128 grandchildren and, and great grandchildren collectively. What? And so, yes, my grandparents had um, a very large family. And so, you know, that you hear the adage, it takes a village. And mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we had our own village. And so when it came to the needs of the children and grandchildren, our family did what was needed and necessary to step up and make those things happen. And so, um, just a, like I said, just a very happy childhood. So growing up, I thought I was going to end up being a doctor at one point, went to college, thought I was going to be an attorney. And so, um, you know, those were my plans and my thoughts. Um, things had a, a chance to kind of deviate from that. But it was a really good childhood. I have no complaints. Um, even in the absence of my grandparents, um, who are resting in God's amazing grace, um, they tried to make things perfect for their children. And so mm. it was pretty good. That's good. And it's awesome to hear when someone says they had a good upbringing. Because right. that is the core of a lot of the beginnings of good things or not, right? Correct. Correct. And so you had a very good beginning. And then um, Miss, I'm going to be a a, a, a a doctor, lawyer, I mean, Miss Education, right? That's right. <laughs> so how did you progress to be this woman that is um, a chair here in, well, in North Carolina, uh, Rowan, Rowan, Rowan Salisbury County? Uh -huh, Rowan Salisbury School District. So um, to start off, Back in 2013, um, the first, well, the second book that I wrote was called Gem Stones Embrace Her, Become Her, Love Her. Mm -hmm. And so this book derived from me just journaling, just writing down things. And that's how a lot of my books um, come to fruition, just me writing about different things. And so mm -hmm. I remember being invited to a youth revival um, after the book was actually published. And my Aunt May, who's on here, hey, Aunt May, um, my Aunt May um, actually went in my stead because I had a, a conflict during that time. And so when I gave her the book to read, she said, well, my prayer is that God will bring it to life. And so um, she was there reading several of the, the chapters to the young ladies um, that night. And so just to give you a, a synopsis of it you have ruby which is the gemstone of respect sapphire the gemstone of sexuality opal the gemstone of opportunity amber the gemstone of abandonment emerald the gemstone of envy pearl the gemstone of promiscuity and diamond was the gemstone with the disability you had topaz was um the gemstone of trials and tribulations and so I remember her calling me that night saying she couldn't wait to get home. And she said, while she was reading some of it, 
um, young ladies just had their hand up the whole time. And she was like, well, can I finish reading, you know, the paragraph before I take any questions? And then she said, well, she read another one. A young lady was sitting back there crying. And she said, did I say the wrong thing? And so what happened was the character, the fictitious characters that she was reading was actually their stories. And wow. so when she got home that night, she said, it's beyond a book. I see mm-hmm. summer camps. I see a, a van, um, Drake with your name on it. Like she was speaking all these things into existence. And I'm like, girl, it's just a book. You know, in a sense, like, you know, I just wrote the book, but I didn't know that it would reach um, the hearts of so many young ladies and actually be their stories. Mm-hmm. So not long after that, um, I met Alex. Mm-hmm. And um, him yeah, and I, Alex? So Alex is my late husband. Mm-hmm. Alex passed away in 2022. Um, I mean, 2020 from ALS. I'm sorry. Okay. And so um, during that time, Jim Stones was here and he had um, Compass. So him and I ended up merging our gemstones and compass together and came up with gemstones and compass leadership academy and so this is a leadership academy for boys and girls fifth through 12th grade um it's basically geared towards at-risk youth and so we put our thinking caps on developed this program and so we were doing just a mentoring aspect of it and so one of the requirements though was since we're dealing with leadership we wanted to see what they were learning in school so they had to bring us their report cards and progress reports for us to see exactly where they were along their journey so we could make sure that they were properly equipped for you know the real world or what have you and so what we ended up noticing was some of them um they were actually i'm just going to give an example you might have had a seventh grader but they were not reading on the seventh grade level and so like you know where does this disconnect come in and so Alex was always the type of person like, you know, what you going to do about it? So during that time, there was an open seat on the Rowan Salisbury Board of Education. And I'm like, now I have a chance to really learn the ins and outs of what our school district does, what it entails and what's being taught in our you know, our classrooms. Uh-huh. And so I ended up um, putting my name out there. And so my first year on running for school board, I think I had about 20,000 votes and was able to secure that seat. And so I was able to get my feet wet and learn the ins and outs of it more and more. And so the second time I ran was able to keep my seat. And so um, this year, being named as the first woman of color to hold this, I didn't even know that until one of the uh, former board members called me and was like, I hear congratulations are in order. I thought she was just saying for me becoming board chair, but she was like, you just made history in Rowan County. And I had no idea. So that's pretty much how I became um, part of the school board. Yes, and that the the that is the uh, the shoulders in which uh, the young people are going to be standing on are yours because yes. we have established that and um, set a precedent. And so, thank you for persevering and doing that. So, on the side, so that's one aspect of your life, your gym, your gym, we're going to talk about the gym, but you also, um, your husband, you, you wrote a book, co-author with your husband. Let's talk about your journey, um, with your husband dealing with Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS. So, um, apparently when Alex and I met, he did not have ALS. Um, During the time we started Gemstones and Compass, he did not have ALS. Mm -hmm. And so Alex um, got his diagnoses in 2014, 2014-15. And so him and I would walk a lot um, and work out, what have you. So one day I noticed that he had this crazy limp. And I was like, what you do? Did you sprain your ankle or something? He was like, I have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so he ended up going to the doctor. Um, he went through a series of specialists, acupuncture, you name it. And his primary came back and said, I think this is what it is, but I hope it's not what it is. And so we went to Illinois for a second opinion. And Alex was, in fact, diagnosed with ALS. And so after his diagnosis, we were not married then. Mm-hmm. By the way, we were not married. 
And so he looked at me, he said, so what are you going to do? And I'm like, I'm in it for the long haul. Like, even though we were business partners, we were dating. And so the foundation was pretty much laid, right? And so um, the crazy part about this is when I met Alex, it was mistaken identity. We met at an interdenominational revival one night at church. And I thought his name was Harvey. And I went up to Alex and I said, hey. And he looked at me and said, peace and blessings. And I was like, what is wrong with Harvey? Because he never addresses me that way, right? <laughs> and so he thought my name was Tasha. And so wow. all along, we thought we were, you know, someone else. And it just wow. developed there. And so when Alex actually proposed to me, the same place where we went was the same place he proposed. So one night it was raining really, really hard. And mm -hmm. he said, let's just take the long ride home. And so we ended up doing it. So when we got to the end of Long Street, he said, can you pull it to the church parking lot? And I'm like, what? You know, it's raining. We need to pull into the church parking lot. And he said, you know, tonight is really a beautiful storm. And that's where the book was titled from the downpouring of rain. He said, this really symbolizes, you know, what we're dealing with right now. Mm -hmm. And so he asked me to marry him. And the funny thing about it is Alex and I have two wedding dates. So when I was, you know, growing up, you always hope, wish and pray that your parents would be around to see you get married. And so for my parent, my mom is, heavily involved in my life. I see her every day, but my dad wasn't, but my grandfather stepped in in his stead. So one of the things that my grandfather promised me is that he would live to see me get married. And so during that time, my grandfather was having a series of, um, you know, health conditions, health situations or what have you. And Alex said, I know how important it is for your grandfather to live to see you get married. Do you want to get married early? But I promise you, I'll still give you the wedding that you want. So Alex and I actually got married in my grandparents' living room no. with just a handful of family members and close friends. And my grandparents were able to be the witnesses on my um, marriage license. And so my granddad, he kept his promise. Now, the day of my actual wedding, uh -huh. the bells and whistles, I said, Daddy, you coming? He said, no, I already saw you get married. So... <laughs> But he, he kept his promise to me, and that just shows you the type of man that Alex was. Wow. Like, I know how important it was for your grandfather to be part of our day, and I wanted to make that part come true for you. So it was wow. it was, it was was beautiful, to say the least. Yeah. So how, how long were you and Alex married before he passed? So Alex and I had just celebrated our second year wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. And... Um, during that time period, things were just getting really, really rough. Like um, doctors saying that he was, you know, starting to transition. If they were, when I tell you, he fought and made sure that he was here long enough to still celebrate our, our two year wedding anniversary with me. Um, very difficult to say the least. Um, when and, and throughout the book, there's different headings. I mean, you had the hurricane, the tornado, you had wind, rain, all of those are in there because those are the different storms that we experienced. Now, don't get me wrong, we had some clear skies and rainbows too, but we experienced a lot of um, bad times. ALS is a, a very ugly, gruesome disease. And it was like he explained it as him being trapped in his body and not being able to do anything. But being the man that he was, Alex was very intelligent, very articulate. And my prayer always for him was that even if God took everything else, that he would not take his mind and his voice. Because that's who he was. Like people would come to the house just to be able to, you know, talk to Alex. One guy was getting ready to commit suicide. And he actually came to the hospital to see him when he was in rehab and was like, Alex, I just need you. Like, even though he was sick, with this terminal illness, people were still coming to him for advice, for guidance, for leadership, for all type of things. But that's just who he was. And he gave all of those things to people, regardless of the situation that he was in. Wow. Wow. Amazing, amazing man of God. And 
a, a woman of God for you and him to still go forward in the marriage and knowing the challenges that were coming before you all. I mean, amazing. And Blessed Touch family, you need to get this book um, so that you can uh, definitely hear about the challenge, read about it and, and go through it. This is a beautiful storm. This is um, Alicia and Alex uh, on their wedding day. This is the second wedding. Yes, the second wedding. <laughs> yes, this is their second wedding. And um, they went through two years and how many months? No, it was two, it was two years and about seven days. Seven days. Oh my. Yeah, he was determined to make it to the two-year mark with you all. Yeah. And um, to God be the glory, um, you all created something amazing with the gemstones and compass. So I, I thank you for uh persevering through that time and being able to. Uh, bless so many because you are definitely involved in the children's lives. So we thank you for that. So I, I have to ask, um, I have to go back. Were you raised in church? Where, where did your, your faith walk begin? Oh, absolutely. Many didn't play that. My grandmother was, <laughs> she was adamant about her kids being raised in the church. Um, mm -hmm. My parents, my aunts, my uncles, um, they were singers. Now, I don't have the gift like my sister does. I'm not going to try to hum a tune like Nadia I, or my mom. I'd rather do that up and keep it at that. But we were raised in church our entire lives from a, you know, a little girl growing up even into adulthood. Um, mm -hmm. Our parents were adamant about you know studying to show yourself approved and having your own relationship with God. Like You were not exempt from that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know me. Now, let me ask you this, um, coming up in church, as you were raised in church and knowing God, when did you come to depend on him? Like you like, oh, I can depend on him. When, where were you at in your life when you recognized he's dependable? So for me, it had to have been in my mid-20s, to say the least. Um, cause I was dealing with some serious things. And so during that time, the first book that I wrote was even me once hard and broken now worthy. Um, I was dealing with some serious issues with my dad. Mm -hmm. So me becoming a mother and knowing what I wanted out of my life and for my daughter's life and how much it meant for me to establish that personal relationship with God, some healing had to take place. And so part of that healing was forgiveness. Because I carry a major ton of bricks on my shoulders and on my back with ill feelings towards my dad for not being in my life. Like the abandonment, that's how I really felt. Like I wasn't good enough for him to be there. Like why would he out of all people just, you know, leave me by the side of the road and, and not come back and pick me up? So for the longest I had resentment. And so I didn't want the resentment that I had in my heart towards him to keep me from prospering because I had goals and aspirations and I had to be um, a good mother for my child. And I wanted her to see that, like, you know, you can't allow the stumbling box, st you know, stand in your way, and keep you from getting things. But when you don't forgive, you're creating those stumbling blocks and keeping things from manifesting. So I got to where I just had to release him now do i not love him of course i love him i would open my arms to him today if he walked through my home and still embrace him as the father that he's supposed to be but i did have to give it to god and leave it there and and i have been you know striving and moving forward ever since so wow. therefore i had to lean and depend on god for him to heal that place in my heart for me to be able to continue to prosper you said something very significant. You said you couldn't let your daughter see that, nor could you allow that to prevent you from moving forward in your life. Um, after you forgave him and, and that burden was gone, what changed for you in your life that you recognized? It's like, oh, this is, this is different. 
Um, I would say the changes were being able to see my goals come to fruition, being able to flourish, being able to be free and be happy. Yeah. Um, not feeling like I was in bondage or anything of that sort. So just the freedom, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. being able to give all that I had in me, because again, that was something that was holding me back from being able to be, you know, sitting in church, knowing you have um, these type of burdens, you have these type of feelings towards people and you're not able to release it, but it, it gave me a sense of freedom. Mm -hmm. so I can really lean and depend on God. And so for me, I mean, that was an amazing feeling. Yeah, I, I, I'm i excited for you because I can imagine because you said you were burdened. You, you, the burden was lifted like you were under some stuff. Yes. And anybody in the chat, anybody have felt like you were under some stuff? Put that in the chat. Um, so and it, it made you feel like you weren't good enough to a certain yeah. degree. Yeah. Yeah. Less than yes less than less than and um my pastor's on here she's been doing a series on uh comparison and that's what it is what we're doing is comparing ourselves and mm. uh, i'm glad you broke free broke free wow it's still free <laughs> it's still free and still and flourishing yes you are you are free and flourishing so yeah. One of the things I, I want to talk about uh, with you, um, you mentioned the uh, gems, uh, gems and uh, gemstones and compass um, booklet, but for you to, and they say break the glass ceiling, what did that take for you in this new position uh, that you are, well, it's not new anymore, but being the first woman of color, as you stated, to be in that position in the education um, arena, what did it take for you to get there? Um, it took a lot of perseverance, believe it or not. Um, sometimes it's really difficult when you are on our school board, there was only two women of color there, period. And so some people look at it as you might not know what you think, you know, just being steadfast and believing in yourself. It took me to actually believe in myself in a different way. Like if they can do it, so can I. But I also had little girls looking at me. And so me being able to tell them that you can be a leader if you follow these steps or you follow this blueprint. I had to practice what I was preaching because all the time they were looking at me, you know, in different ways. And so. It's, it's been rewarding, but it took a whole lot of hard work. And mind you, politics, being in this political realm was not the plan that I had for myself. Right. I thought I was going to law school. Mm -hmm. I went and took the LSAT and thought I was going to be an attorney. And God was like, no, nah, that's not the plan that I have for your life. And so being able to grab a hold of what his plan is, you know, that's what I've done. And so even before becoming on the school board, back in 2013 when this book was released and all this stuff i had given god a yes and i mm. told him whatever your plan is for my life whatever your will is i'm following and so that's what he had he revealed those things so a simple yes turned into all of this and so it's just not stopping there um actually i am on the ballot for november the 4th here in in the united states basically i'm running for the north carolina house of representatives district 76 and so you know, still just creating um goals and following my dreams and aspirations i'm excited about it and the crazy thing about district 76 is that's the year that i was born so i don't think it by happenstance yeah so the district that i'm running for is actually the year in which i was born so i am super excited about that and again referring back to my aunt may she calls me shirley she calls me Shirley Chisholm. So it's huh? something when you have family, when you have mm -hmm. friends who can see things sometimes that you can and believe in you in ways that you never thought. And so right. having that support system, it goes back to having that that made that village. Mm -hmm. Your abilities to do what you sometimes think that you can. So this is what I need you to do right now. I'm going to put you front and center. This ain't your front and center time. Oh. And I need you to go ahead and give your 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 vote for me. Can you give me your vote for me speech? Ah, <laughs> surprise! 
surprise, y'all. She didn't know that was coming, but you know, you you run it. This is this is the audience right now. Somebody else is gonna see this. So I'm gonna give you your little platform here, right here with the Blessed Touch family. And oh. give me one, give me one second. We're gonna that make sure uh you are heard. So <laughs> over to you. So you got me real good. So here I am, y'all. Alicia Bird Clark running from North Carolina House of Representatives, District 76. Born and raised in Rowan County, no stranger to servant leadership. So I have been here in the trenches trying to make sure that education is top priority for our babies in Rowan County. So I stand on advocacy for not only education, but for teachers' pay. Our teachers are ranked 48 in the state, which is really really low and so being able to make sure that our teachers are adequately compensated for their hard work in our classrooms in addition to that another thing that's on our ballot is women's rights and women's reproductive health i believe that no man has the right to say what a woman can and cannot do with her body so being able to advocate for education for sustainable growth for teachers pay and women's rights are my priorities and I am the type of person that I'm not interested in building walls. I'm interested in building bridges. So I ask for your support this November. So when you see Alicia Bird Clark on the ballot, know that I am advocating for you and you only. That was so impromptu. Because <laughs> it's in you. It is in you. And that's who we want. We want people that are ready to tell us what you stand for and why. And there you go. That's your why. My pastor said, you got to know what your why is. That's right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's yeah. Right. So thank you for sharing that with us. And bless such family. You know, we got to get out and vote. Get out and vote. That's very important so that we can represent and put those people in office that need to be there. I'm not a politician. I just slept at a, a, a holiday in last night. So anyway. <laughs> So um, I want to ask you, in all that you've come, come through, you said, I gave God my yes. Mm -hmm. But how did you stay in that thing and trust in him? Because you went through some things. Even me talks about the challenges, the book, Even Me. So everyone, uh, this is the book, uh, Even Me, that she has written. And um, this is life. Right. She's she's written this book about life, her life. And then she has a beautiful storm, which is talking about more of life unraveling. But it's a beautiful unravel because it's about love. So tell me how and the Blessed Touch family share with us how you sustain your relationship with the Lord and how it prospered, how it grew. So even after giving God my yes, um, I still experienced, you know, just a series of, you know, ups and downs or whatever. But my faith walk with him had grown stronger. And I believe that whatever God brought to me or within my path, that he was going to see me and sustain me through it. So being able to journal, being able to meditate, being able to worship and pray in my own way um, made me stay with within those lines and so i'm just grateful that i was taught at a, a, a young and early age how to establish that relationship with him had i not been it probably would have still been difficult to this day but because i had um it made things a whole lot easier even going through the stuff with alex who when i tell you every vow that we made before our family and friends was tested Mm -hmm. But our love remained strong and steadfast, and we stood on that. And so every night before we went to bed, you know, regardless if I had dozed off or he had, Alex would wake me up and make sure that we prayed before we went to bed. That that was never something that we didn't do. We mm -hmm. always, you know, prayed in the morning and prayed at night. And so we both had established that relationship with God. And to this day, um, the traumatic side of things that was experienced was um after alex passed away the day after his funeral my grandmother had a massive stroke and four days later she passed away which was actually on my sister's birthday 
And so you hear about people saying that they've lost loved ones back to back to back, but that was really a major blow to our family because of the love that we had for him and the love that we shared for my grandmother. And so we didn't have no choice but to lean on God. And to this day, we're all in the same boat. We, you know, we come here, we reminisce about my grandparents, but if it wasn't for the grace of God, keeping all of us, I don't know where we would be. So again, being able to establish and hold on to that relationship has been very imperative. So you said something to me um, before we were talking about you and Alice being able to share the truths of your relationship. Can you share that with the Blessed Touch family, how, how you all were just, you know, say it, how you feel today? So um, around the time when things were really getting terminal, when I tell you I was, I was mad, I was big girl mad. I was mad because God had blessed me with the man of my dreams, um, the perfect, perfect man. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, so I can, you know, check this off. I got my husband and now all this stuff is happening. Now, mind you, I knew Alex had ALS. So it's not like I didn't know this existed, but we were very optimistic and hopeful and praying that because he had a stem cell transplant that it would slow down the progression of ALS. Well, that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Two weeks literally after our you know, wedding, Alex went into respiratory failure. And so it was like, we ended up spending our honeymoon in the hospital. So we didn't get the elaborate honeymoon. We didn't get all those things. We were in the hospital for 61 days, 30 days in ICU and 31 days in rehab. So from that point on, it was like everything was tested, but gosh, God was still faithful. Our family was there um, and all that stuff. And I don't know if I can or can't, if I have a, um, just to be able to thoroughly explain what I was feeling. Can I just read something right quick? Sure. Okay. Yes. So in this book, there's a section called Living on Empty. Mm. I've made no secret of the fact that I've cried out to God numerous times asking him why Alex was afflicted with ALS. I've also been clear that God never answered me. That's right. No matter how many times I questioned him, crickets. The Bible tells us in Matthew 7 and 7, asking it will be given to you. Seeking you will find, knocking and it shall be open. Those of you who knew Jesse and many knew that they were all what they were all about the Lord and their family. So you know what that means. I was raised in the church, which means of course that I grew up hearing, ask it shall be given, seek and ye shall find. So you already know what I'm about to say next. Why on earth in the darkest moments or hours of my lowest points in my most critical time in need, God was forsaking me. Why was he answering me? Why was he just leaving me out there blowing in the wind like a lost child who can't find his way home? And the, as the days turned to weeks and the weeks turned to months, I continued feeling as though I, God had abandoned me. I'd hear people say they were praying for Alex and me. And I think to myself, I hope God is answering you because he sure isn't answering me. Wow. We've all had times in our life where we felt like nobody cared like we were all alone, like it was us against the world. At times during Alex's illness, that's exactly how I felt. To be sure, there were plenty of friends and relatives who were there for me and Alex, but nonetheless, that's how I felt at times. Maybe I felt this way during my private pity parties, don't know. But like I said, that's how I felt at times. And not getting answers from God only worsened matters for me. Now, don't get me wrong. I continue believing in God and praising him and going to church. I never left, lost faith in God. I just didn't understand why he was ignoring me. And there is so much more, you know, in that. But I would like to share this little small part, if you don't mind. And it's titled, God Answered. The day after we lost Alex, you'll never guess what happened. I finally heard from God. Now, I could have been angry at God for taking so long. I could have just stood shaking my head over the irony of his timing, or I could have lashed out at anyone who and everyone around me, but I did none of that. Instead, I listened to God's answer, which was as clear as the as just washed window on the bridge of 
Ooh, excuse me. Instead, I listened to God's answer, which was as clear as a just washed window on a bright sunny day and hit me in a good way, like a ton of bricks. God told me he didn't answer when I cried out to him with the questions because in those moments, it was more important that I keep my focus on what Alex was dealing with rather than why he was dealing with it. And so um, it was just so many other things that he, you know, revealed in it, but it was more so the why versus the what. And so I was, I was in my feelings for a long time, like praying, 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 like why us? But the things that came out of it, why not us? Because people got healed, people got delivered, people got set free. Um, our legacy was built. Our kids got to see us in a different manner. Right. We never stopped giving. We never grew, drew away from our purpose. We still invested in our businesses. We still did things that we were supposed to have done. But it's something when you just don't understand when God doesn't answer, you don't lose sight of who he is. You remain yeah. steadfast and keep your hope and your faith. And that's what I had to do. But he He answered, but he answered in his own time. Wow. Yes. He, he And that's what he does. He's sovereign, right? And so we, we want to answer right now. <laughs> Excuse me. We want to answer right now, but it's not always when we want it. How is it? So, since my voice is going, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. It's the Blessed Touch family. And just let the Lord use you. Okay. Over to you. In a world filled with uncertainties and challenges, it's natural to feel overwhelmed at times. However, amidst the storms of life, we have a steadfast anchor in God's promises. This evening, let's draw inspiration and encouragement from the timeless truth of trusting in God and remembering the following. First of all, God's faithfulness. Reflect on past experience where God has shown his faithfulness in your life. Even in your darkest moments, he has been there guiding, protecting, and providing. Remember to cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. By surrendering your worries, fears, and burdens to him, trust that God is in control, even when circumstances seem overwhelming. Remember that there is strength and weakness. When you feel inadequate or incapable, rely on his strength. God equips you with everything you need to face challenges before you because his grace is always sufficient. Remember that walking by faith and stepping out on faith are important. Trusting God often means stepping out on faith and step out of your comfort zones, even when the path ahead is unclear, unknown. Have faith that God is leading you, guiding each step along the way. Remember, faith is not about having all the answers, but trusting in the one who does. Trust in his wisdom, timing, and plan for your life. God is sovereignty. God is sovereign over all things. Take comfort in knowing that God is not taken by surprise by the events unfolding in your life. He is orchestrating his perfect plan even amid uncertainty. And remember that trusting in his promises and his process is necessary. Spending time meditating on God's promises, allowing his word to fill you with hope and confidence. Claim his promises over your life and circumstances. Be willing to surrender your plans and desires to God, trusting that his ways are higher than ours. As we journey through life's ups and downs, let's hold fast to the assurance that God is with us every step of the way. As we trust in him with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding, he will make our path straight. He is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. May we find strength, peace, courage, and trust in God wholeheartedly, knowing that he holds the future in the palm of his hands. Trust in him, lean on his promises, and rest in his unfailing love. I hope that tonight something that I've said has encouraged your soul. 
um i'm still healing still going through you know the void of alex not being here but through it all god has been tremendously faithful he has been just and i will never ever not depend on what i know that he can do for me and my family so this is just a snippet of who i am I keep telling myself the world still hasn't seen all of me. And so I just believe that there is still more to come, not only because I've been a faithful leader and servant, because I have been a faithful wife. And I believe in all that God has done and what he plans on doing in my life. And to all of you from North Carolina um, family, I just really appreciate you for being able to chime in tonight to be here. I appreciate Tammy for this amazing platform that I plan on following from here on out, not just because I was part of it, but I was able to sit in on my brother last week. Hey, BJ, I know you on here. So BJ was truly amazing. He was fantastic. He, he went into worship and had all of us messed up. And so I'm, I'm just grateful. I am. I'm grateful. Very, very grateful. So I appreciate all of you all for being on here. I see dr nicole hill avery um i see my line sister felicia archie my aunt may and joy lamando melissa my line sister ro that's her name her line name is bishop now you talking about somebody who will pray you out of some stuff and through some stuff oh my gosh it's absolutely okay. amazing i had to give Rhoda a plug <laughs> all right my name is tammy padilla <laughs> yes and so uh, timothy pastor timothy bates who um has been very instrumental in alex's life and mine southern yeah. city tabernacle is a church out of east spencer north carolina um alderman sean rush he's my campaign manager my ride or die and my baby all right it's on here so she could have been doing a whole lot of other stuff but she's on here supporting her mama and that means the world i love it i love it, I love it. and such a blessing um thank you so much um this charity <laughs> thank you for joining us charity um, chastity chastity, chastity. Um. yes <laughs> blacked out for me there you go chastity <clears throat> so you spoke a, a number of great points and bullets for us to uh, keep in mind as we are <clears throat> going on this journey through life. There are things that we're going to experience, but you said we got to, God is faithful. He has faithfulness, and we got to remember, remember that. And to cast our cares upon him. Yes. You talked about walking by faith and stepping out on faith. Yeah, that's Two different things, but major stepping yes. out on faith. And um, you 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 said God is sovereign. Like we have to remember this is his plan, this is yes. his world, and so he is gonna do whatever he has to do, but he said to us that everything he does is gonna be for the good of those that loved him and are called according to his purpose. <clears throat> So even in all that you went through, y'all look at it. beautiful. I mean, you wouldn't look at you and say, oh, you, you, you dealt with two years of, you know, supporting and, and, and loving a man that you were not quite sure why the Lord was doing what he did, but you still came through trusting the Lord, the more, the more, the more. So. Thank you for uh, sharing uh, the uh, books and thank you for sharing your testimony. Um, for those that are on here tonight, um, you can go to her website. I'm putting it right here. This is gemstonesandcompass.org. Uh, um, this is where you can purchase her book and uh, support her. Um, now, I saw a lot in the chat saying, vote for ABC. <laughs> Alicia, Alicia uh, Bird Clark. Y'all need to vote for her <laughs> if you are interested in supporting her and her campaign. This is her cash app. I don't know how you do that, but uh, we have it here. Um, you can go to her 
uh, website. Again, I'm going to put that up again, gemstonesandcompass.org. And I'm sure you can reach out to her and she will give you some insight on how you can support her um, as she's running uh, for this next seat. Come on here. We got to vote for ABC. Yes. Right. Vote for ABC. Yes. And I will ask this, though, guys, please keep me in your prayer. So I am coming on the tail end of my doctorate. Hopefully, my completion date is supposed to be July the 24th of this year, but I believe I'm going to pull it out before then. So it's been a journey. It's been a long time coming. And this is something that I had to put on the back burner when Alex got diagnosed. And so one of the last things he said to me was, don't keep that on the back burner too long. So I've been pushing ever since um, he left, trying to cross this finish line. And so Hopefully, God will see fit that in June that I will be done and we will be Dr. Alicia Bird Clark. Ask doctor, <laughs> Dr. ABC, come on here. Dr. ABC, Dr. ABC. And so, um, Joy says, I enjoyed you, Leisha Leash. And she <laughs> said, I always saw you as an amazing woman, but now I have background knowledge to know, uh, to now say, you are an amazing woman. So Thank you, blessings. Joy. blessings. Um, you don't know what people have been through. You, you know, we see people, but we don't know their story. And that's what this segment is about. It's about sharing uh, your story. Um, Melissa says, yes, look at God. I'm so happy and proud of you. Thank you, Melissa. Yeah, who's in Maryland says, you got this, Dr. ABC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and my pastor's on here. She wanted to know where to buy the book. So um, that's at gemstones um, and compass.org. And um, all of the books are on Amazon. Okay. Yes. Okay. And they're on Amazon as well. So um, we have the Amazon queen on here. I'm not going to say who that is. Uh, Amazon queen of all queens uh, is on <laughs> Amazon. So uh, you can purchase your book on Amazon. Um, Ms. Eleanor said, Alicia, I, I so enjoyed your testimony and honesty. Thank you. And that's so important. Mm -hmm. Let me see who else on here. So Mark Routon is on here, Bishop Mark Routon. He's in Fayetteville um, in uh, North Carolina. And uh, he will be one of your supporters, I believe. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and you, Nicole said, speak back. So I'm just <laughs> trying to see who, who else has joined us. Um, we have Thelma Smith Foundation here tonight. And she says, yes, glory, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then she also said, um, we thank God for you, Miss Alicia Bird Clark and your husband. Mr. Clark, and the wonderful works that you all have done and still do in our community. <clears throat> That's amazing that you all are still being recognized in your community. Wait a minute, you all received, tell us about what you received from the, from the um, community. Y'all got, uh, got some assets. Yeah, so in, I think it was 2019, Alex and I received the key to the city for our philanthropic work um, here in Salisbury. So when we first started Gemstones and Compass, it was basically with the money out of our pockets and lint um, and what have you. And so as of date, we have, even in his absence, have given out $15,000 in college scholarships to first generational college students and our youth. So any child that's in our program and they stay with us up until their high school senior year, it automatically qualifies them for one of our scholarships. So this past year we gave out two. And actually this year, I don't have any of this graduating, but just being able to give back. And so even within Jim Snow's and Compass, we have a full fledged food and toiletry pantry that serves anyone in Rowan County that's in need. And I will be honest and say at one point, Miss um, Tammy, I was I was ready to walk away from it because mm -hmm. with Alex not being here, it was really hard for me to continue moving forward. And so I had to 
um, continue to tell myself he lived his purpose. He fulfilled his purpose here on earth and I still have to fulfill mine. So that's what keeps me going. Like I have to work on my legacy. I have to work on my dash and make sure that the things that God has for me are, you know, they're for me. And I can't walk away from those things knowing that what his plan is for me is perfect. And it's, you know, his will for my life. So I just, I'm, I'm still on the wheel. You are an encouragement on the wheel. You are an encouragement. Um, uh, Pastor Bishop Mark Routon uh, says former state president, <clears throat> um, Pastor Avery, who is a mm -hmm. former General Baptist uh, State Convention in North Carolina and lives in Salisbury. Do you know? Well, his that? wife is on here. His wife is Nicole Hill Avery, Dr. Oh. Nicole. She's on here, okay. yes. Pastor Avery's okay. wife. Uh -huh. Well, thank you for joining us, Dr. Nicole and um, Pastor Bishop. Thank you so much. And so tonight we're going to close out. I want to say to you, thank you so much for coming to share your testimony. Thank you for um, giving us your pitch uh, for your position. And yes. um, we're going to pray in Jesus' name that you are going to take that seat and uh, be like representing us all, right? Yes. Giving glory. So thank you for your testimony. And um, please, you all buy her books. She has three books out there, even me and uh, the uh, beautiful storm. Those are her uh, real uh, story, life stories about her. And then the other book is Gemstones. Um, that will bless you. It's, it's talking about the different facets of uh, women um, who we are and the stories that have real connections to life. So please uh, buy her book and I'm going to turn it over to you to pray. But one thing before you pray, bless such family. I need you all to know that next week, we're going to have another worship discussion. Y'all know we've been, this will be our fourth discussion. And if you have, uh, if you have, uh, what do I want to say? If you have signed up for Blessed Touch LLC and you are able to uh, like it, you know, and, and be a subscriber of Blessed Touch LLC, then you will get these notifications of everyone that is going to be my guest, as well as other information. So if you subscribe to my page, which is Blessed Touch LLC, uh, you will be able to have access before anybody else enough to know who is going to be on the segment. So that's very important. So you can just go to Blessed Touch LLC. Um, <clears throat> that, I can't even find it, but Blessed Touch LLC, just subscribe to that page. And then next week, I need you to know that um, after our discussion on worship, we are going to, um, that Friday, we're going to be bringing the women together at the well. So get ready, get ready. There's gonna be, there will be a well discussion. And so uh, you need to join us uh, for Pastor Wilkins. She's going to be bringing the word that night. And um, the information is here, but if you need the information again, I will share this on my page so you will be able to find it on my Facebook page. This is the information you need to meet us at the well on the 19th at 7.30. I promise you, you will be blessed. So back over to you, Ms. Alicia Bird Clark, A E A B C doctor. <laughs> Um, Tammy, thank you again for the opportunity to share my story. And again, I hope that it um, bless someone's soul um, in a mighty way. So y'all, let's um, join me in prayer. Okay. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know thus said the Lord. Lord, we come thanking you for this day. Thank you for the provisions that you've made. From the rising of the sun this morning to all, to the going down of the same. Lord, I just ask that those who are under the sound of my voice, Lord, 
that before they go tonight to bed tonight, that they will lay depression at your feet, anxiety, the prognosis and the diagnosis at your feet. Lord, I pray that you will bless all of our children who are represented on here. And Lord, we just thank you for being faithful. Thank you for protecting us all day long from hurt, harm, and danger. Lord, I just ask uh, continued blessings for those who are dealing with so many different things in their lives, for their family and their friends. Lord, we thank you so much for just being faithful, for being just, for being our provider, for making ways out of no ways and for just seeing us through. And Lord, that we ask that when we go to bed tonight, that you would keep our families safe, that you would protect our homes and keep us from all hurt, harm and danger. And as we begin our day tomorrow, that you will meet us when we wake up, that you will make provisions, that you will see us through and that you will make all things new. Lord, thank you for it all. I don't take it for granted, but I just thank you for just being faithful. Thank you for being merciful. Lord, I thank you for your grace that has been bestowed amongst all of us. And Lord, we just thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your peace, and your love. These things we ask in your name. Amen. 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 And I just want to say thank you again for being here with us. Let's touch family. We'll see you next week. We thank you for joining us for another segment of Let's Talk About Him. God is amazing, so just keep trusting him. So, uh, Dr. ABC, can you uh, just stay right there? Don't go anywhere. And I'm just going to close out with the Bless Touch family. All okay. right. Blessings to you all. Bless Touch. Thank you.